There's nothing like being free. There's nothing like being free. There's nothing like being a free. There's nothing like being 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 free. Oh, yeah.
felt it. Do you feel your freedom? You feel that aliveness? I thank you, Celebration, for transcending us into a whole other state of understanding of who we are, about the state we live in, and the country that we live in, and the capacity we have to be free. I, this is totally off script, but when I go out onto a floor to dance and nobody knows who I am, <laughs> I dance with abandon and I am free. And you know what happens when that happens? Everybody gets to be free. They're like, oh, I want to do that. And so suddenly everybody's out on the dance floor and it's like, yeah, let's have some fun. Never, ever be afraid of letting your light shine. Let it shine, dear ones. It's why you're here. All right, so we didn't think it was going to be hot enough today. So we thought a fireside chat would help warm things up a bit. And although you don't see the flames here, it's kind of got the idea, and we've got the Christ candle right back there, so there really is a fire. But what's really on fire is what's inside of us. It's that spirit of the living God that sets us free, that's in you, and it's in me. It's in every single one of us. So we thought this might be a fantastic time to set a moment for us to talk with each other. Um, it's halfway through this year already. Can you believe that? Christmas is around the corner. Um, <laughs> and Brian and I have been here for almost two years. Can you believe that? Wow. That went fast. That went a really, really fast. Whoa. Yeah, matter of fact, when we first got here, we would go like this. Because it was like learning from a fire hose because there was so much happening. And it was like catching a full, fast-moving train at like the bullet in France, 200 miles per hour. And we were catching it moving. So we were always going like, woo, <laughs> like the dog with his face. Uh, but uh, I did want to share with you a little bit about our journey and about mine in particular. Because, you know, I used to, like three years ago, be in a whole different land. Yeah, I was in Kansas City, and um, I was working at Unity Worldwide Ministries. I smile at Tim because he's been a board member on that uh, national board for many years now. Twelve? How many? No, seven. All right, okay. Um, and we've known each other from that time period, and I wanted to give you a glimpse back in time three years ago. I was a single mom of a young boy who had my own little condo, cute little place, nestled in like a bug in a rug, and um, I was loving the national movement and doing everything I could to support the recognition of our community on a national level, and um, I had just moved through a diagnosis of cancer, had a mastectomy, I mean, there's like lots of things that happened. So talk about transformation. I moved from that experience three years ago into these next two years that came. Brian and I got married. He moved from California, I moved from Kansas City. We rented a home, ended up buying a home a year later. We got settled in, and what we began to become acclimated to was each of your beloved and beautiful hearts and souls. Now, on a national level, when you work for a denominational headquarters, you hear of all of the anomalies on what can happen in ministry. So I kind of call that earlier phase being nestled in the harbor. Sweet little harbor, lovely little place, but um, I hadn't gone out to sea yet. And when I was called to this ministry, um, I do believe it was a divine calling, something that was orchestrated by a mind larger than mine, larger than Brian's. There were cardinals involved. Someday I'll tell you that story. It's pretty interesting. But it was definitely a sign from the divine. And, and we, were, we were called down here, and so I was kind of like wondering, what is ministry really going to be like? What's the deep blue sea of ministry truly all about? And... Um, what I wasn't prepared for was meeting hundreds of you and getting to know all of your names and all of your family's names and all of the transformation that your life has walked through and come through. And I've done that to the best of my capacity and I'm still learning and growing and I thank you all for your patience with me as I continue to grow. But the, the real sweetness has come in how much I have found the capacity to love you and to be loved by you. That is something that I had never 
ever experienced before. And I, I look around this room and I see so many lovely people, even people I want to know better, and I'm excited at the opportunity to get to know. And it's just like the love has no end. The, that capacity for our connection of, of the joy, of, of sweetness of the soul that you are. It's mind-blowing. When you first came onto these grounds, these 14 acres, did you feel like something shifted when you got onto the campus? Like there was a special energy, a vortex of love and acceptance? Not, it is here. It's, that has been created intentionally by people like yourselves who have wanted to bring something so beautiful and sacred and it was so important to them that they have committed so much time and energy. I wish I could share with you all what has been done by our four, four congregants here who've, who've come before us and prepared literally this space and these grounds for us. We are blessed beyond measure. And what is unique and interesting is that as I've gotten to know more of you and the beauty of the light that you bring into this world and your families, the, the, the glory of that goodness is profound. And it's not by chance that we're here. It's not by chance that so many amazing souls and human beings have come together. When I was working on the strategic planning team, I was working with eight of us, um, Sharice and uh, John and uh, Bob, and um, there were several of us that, that we, we come tired at the end of the day, and by the end of our three-hour meeting, we're like, <laughs> like Dolby surround sound, you know? It was like we were humming with excitement because we were discerning the, the needs of this ministry. We we're planning into how to hear from you all, how to synthesize what you were saying into a plan for this ministry to grow into its capacity. And what we could tell is that this is a coalescence of brilliance, of therapists, of people who love to make a difference in this world, and that there's a capacity yet untapped, that we can be a lighthouse in this world, in this state, and that we can shine the light of who we are in a more brilliant way than we even have to date. And it was so absolutely exciting. Well, I was meeting with one of you a week or so ago, and we were sitting there in this this big chair and that big chair, and and. I was sharing with, um, or was, they were sharing with me the transformation of their own life within the past year. We'd met a year ago and we were meeting now. And this person had some challenging situations they were facing, but the way they were in the midst of them was at such a deeper state of peace amidst the situation. It was changing and transforming how they were, they were setting out and how they were dealing with it. And it, it was palpable, the growth that had happened, the transformation that happened in this individual. And they said, you know, I'm, I'm volunteering now, but what's next? What am I to do next? What's, and I was like, oh, let me tell you about what's coming. And so I started to share with them this mentorship program. Have you seen the back of our bulletin? Have you ever been overwhelmed by it? Like, whoa, whoa, how does this, what does this mean and how does it play its part in my transformation? You know, what's this and why is it happening? Well, I started to share with them that what we have started to do, and there's a team of people who have come together, brilliant minds, led by Tammy Lorraine, beautiful, lovely soul. She's worked with Reverend Mary Grace Sorensen, Unity Minister. She's worked with Debbie Cole, licensed Unity teacher, and Sandra Vela, who is our chaplain over here. There you are, love. And these minds have percolated a coalescence of ideas that are going to give us the capacity for us to sit with one another. And I can listen to Lance, and I can listen from my wholeness and from your wholeness and from that stillness of that that deep spiritual listening, we can discern together what is the right next step to take on your spiritual pathway toward your transformation of embodying your fullest potential. That is a mentorship that's being crafted. It's not yet ready, but if it speaks to your heart, if you've been on the spiritual journey for a while, touch base with Tammy in the foyer after service because it's going to be coming. And this person, as I was telling them that, I was so excited and she was like starting to cry. She said, this is what we are here for. This is what we are here for.
to help shine the light of love so brightly that it transforms us into who we are capable of being. And I was so excited that night, I couldn't fall asleep until 2 a.m., and I was happier than I have been since I've been in college, and I was really, really happy in college. So I was just like, ah, I was so excited. Um, I was like, I've got to have this conversation with you. You've got to know, as if you were sitting here with me, what goodness is being crafted. And that goodness and that clarity is going to be informing our events and what we're currently doing. And we're going to be able to show you how what we're doing fits into the whole system of your transformation. It's going to be in our new event approval process so that we're going to mindfully choose what we're doing. And we'll know that it's making a difference. And um, I want to share with you the graphic that kind of helps you glimpse into it just a little bit. We're not going to go too heady, but I got to tell you, there's good heady stuff in it. But um, in the top left quadrant is how do I feel about myself? What are my thoughts and my feelings within me? And how can I transform them to a higher state of being? In the top right corner is how am I showing up in the world? How, how is this physicality showing up? in reality, and how can that move to its next level within the world? On the bottom right-hand corner is this capacity of understanding how am I showing up in relationship to Tammy? And how might I do that better? Or with Brian, how might I do that better? Or with Tim, or with Mary Grace, or Lance, with any of you? How am I showing up in the world, and how can I transform into a greater state of the light that I've been created to be? Or how can I show up within this community? How am I showing up within the whole ministry of Unity Church of the Hills? How am I showing up within Austin? How am I showing up being in the state of Texas or in this country? How am I being on this planet and how is it that I can move higher into the expression of who I've been called here to be? So you can see it's the whole human being. And we're going to be able to understand what's happening here at Unity Church in the Hills so that we can discern what is our next right step in growth. And we can support each other on that journey. So there's been something kind of been on the shelf for a little while. We surveyed several of you a long time ago about the Sunday morning proposal. Do you remember that? Okay, and if you don't remember that, I'll give you a brief overview. Um, it's basically that we're going to have an early morning service that's more contemplative and meditative in nature, maybe a touch shorter. Um, then we would have a spiritual academy, and I'll tell you just a little bit more about that in a second. And then we would have an upbeat contemporary service, much like this one is right here. We said, what do you think about it? And we got a whole bunch of surveys from the 8 a.m., the 9.25, and 11.25, and our, lead, our strategy team, which is seven of us that sit on that team, it was eight when Ellen was here, have digested and read every single comment, question, suggestion, concern, everything. And we have brought it into our conversations week after week after we have looked at this. And what we have discerned of just this last week is that there is a high level, a very high level of resonance with this idea of doing this. So we will be moving forward with that. We have uh, several new staff members on our um, staff, so we'll be moving forward mindfully so that everybody gets to s work at a pace that's in a state of grace and in a state of peace. Um, that spiritual academy is an opportunity for us as Unity Church of the Hills to offer up to seven different opportunities to participate in the deepening of the transformation of your spiritual journey whether it's within, whether it's how you show up, whether it's in relationship, or whether it's within the relationship with the world. A state of clarity that allows us to choose how we want to be on this planet. So a lot of good stuff is in motion. We'll probably unfold that over time, um, perhaps in a staged process. We'll keep you informed as we new, move forward. There is no rush, but I just wanted to let you know where we were at with that topic. So non sequitur here. How do you hear spiritual guidance? How do you hear the voice of the divine? Audibly. Audibly. Love that. Thank you. In the silence. I love that. Meditation. Beautiful. Nature. Nature. Oh, streams of gold. I hear 
kind of a lot of different ways. Cardinals being one of them, by the way. White feather is another, but um, I digress. The, the one thing that happened to me most recently is I hear music when I'm waking up and always that, the lyrics and the sound, the, the, the emphasis of the words have a special meaning to me and I mine them for the depth that they bring to me. And normally it's a song I already know and lyrics I've already heard a hundred times only I hear it a new way. But about a week ago, a week and a day ago, I woke up with a new song, a brand new God-created song for me. And um, it went something like this. It's effort, might, or glory. And there was a pause there. And it was like, that I can be in, that I can react to, or that I can respond from what was never done to you. Life is never happening to me. Never happening to me. You see, there is a, there is a creative force ever unfolding, never stopping, always flowing. It's like what I call the cosmic kaleidoscope of creation. Have you seen a kaleidoscope? Have you ever seen it not move or change or adjust? And yet it's beautiful. It moves from beauty to beauty, from glory to greater glory. And, and that is what I recognize, that life's never happening to me. It's happening, strictly happening. And then I get a choice on how I'm going to show up in the midst of that. Am I going to show up through effort? I'm going to push my way through. And let me trust you, I have done that. That's <laughs> right my way through. I'm tenacious <laughs> in a loving kind of way. <laughs> or so I think. Um, Tim probably could tell you I'm tenacious. <laughs> uh, I see a vision and I want to help make that happen. And so I'm going to put my energy and effort to it. But I can respond through effort or I can respond through might. I'm going to figure it out, Baxter. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to figure out the solution to this problem. I love puzzles. Um, but it's through those ways of the ego that I can respond to what's happening in life or through glory, through glory. What's that about? Well, I actually started reading a new book this last week, and it's Mary O'Malley, and she says the title of the book is What's in the Way is the Way. And she talks about the five qualities of the meadow of our well-being. Do you know that we were all born into a meadow of well-being and that we've always been there, we've never left it, we never will leave it? And if you see a beautiful child who's just come to the planet, they know it. You all, do you remember it? The meadow of your well-being, the beauty of your creation, that connection that you share with that infinite invisible. <laughs> Mary O'Malley says there's five different qualities and that one is flow. That kaleidoscope ever unfolding, it's flow. It's always moving, always moving. If it becomes stagnant, it becomes dead. It always is moving. That, that there's a sense of spaciousness in that meadow of well-being. That there's a sense of openness and like this beautiful photo, that there's this sense and capacity to see and hold and behold all things. There's a sense of light, a sense of clarity, an ability to see what's happening and why it's happening and how to move gracefully through it. There's a sense of love. You see, that love is what moves everything. That love connects me to Verlinda and Billy and it, it connects me in my heart to yours and yours to mine and it motivates me to do things, to create anew and to expand. That love is that motivating, unifying force within all of creation. And then there's stillness. Amidst all of the beauty, there's the stillness. That infinite invisible is ever-present, always with us. What you don't know is right before I heard that message, about two days before, my dear friend, Jean Lean, had come into my office and she said, I just need 15 minutes. <laughs> she said, I'm giving you a one-month notice because I'm going to be moving on into my spiritual calling of being a spiritual practitioner and being doing the energy codes work, and I'm no longer going to be the director of finance for Unity Church of the Hills. And my ego said, effort, might, ah, 
<laughs> no. <laughs> but there's been so much moving so fast, so much moving so fast. I mean, I mean, Tamika has just said that she's moving to be her a massage therapist, which is what her nature and her spirit is calling her to be. And we understand that. By the way, that position's open until Tuesday. If you're interested, we would love to hear from you. <laughs> there's a job description in the um, office. We had Laura Maddox who said, I got spiritually that I'm blocking the flow and I need to open up this position in the office manager so that we can get that right, next right person as a full-time employee in here, which allowed us to hire Emily. And she has been a light and she's bringing her truth and her world of clarity, which has already been a blessing. Another moving piece has been that Ellen had just retired and we just had, we had two years to plan into that. Thank you, God, Ellen. I hope you're watching right now. We're so <laughs> grateful. Thank you, thank you. Uh, but we were able to hire Audrey Simpson and Mary Grace as our worship um, coordinator. And so, But there's moving parts and there's so many new moving parts. And Jean, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? Um, but it's not through effort. And it's not through might, it's Jean saying yes to her soul. And I knew this two years ago when I got here. One of the first conversations we had together was that she wanted to serve in the capacity of her soul's calling. She's good at finance. Ask Mary, you know, she's good at it. And it's time for her to move toward her greater glory. And so too it is for us. Now, I can't tell you that my ego didn't say, well, what did I, oh, you know, is it about me? Did I do something wrong? Don't take it personally, right, Susan? <laughs> um, in John chapter 9, 1 through 5, Jesus was walking down the road and his, cha and his uh, chaplains, <laughs> his um, disciples saw someone blind. Chaplains, disciples, you know, it's all that. They're walking down the road and they see somebody blind and said, Jesus, who sinned, his parents or him, that this would happen, that this man be made blind? I'm going to go to the message's interpretation of what Jesus says back. You're asking the wrong question. You're looking for someone to blame. There is no such cause and effect here. Look instead for what God can do. We need to be energetically at work while the sun shines. This change, every change, the creation of the kaleidoscope of that divine energy is always moving, and it's moving us to our higher good. It is not happening to us. It's happening through us in our choice and how we respond to it, through effort, might, or glory. In Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, it says, Do not remember the former things, or consider things of old. Hear ye. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. There is a powerful presence that is our providence, that is providing our pathway ahead, and that has our good in store amidst all of the shifts of the kaleidoscope. This is the pathway of creation. You see, Bob, Bob Withrow and Mary Spangberg, Mary, I lost you somewhere. I don't know where you are. There you are, love. Thank you so much. Mary is our board treasurer. Bob and Mary and Brian and I met together, and we made a craft of a plan A and a plan B. So what we're going to do is have plan A, which is that we have the job opening for our director of finance with a capacity of it expanding into a CFO, COO kind of position that would allow us to actually move in a direction that we have held in our hearts for two years. This may be the parting of the Red Sea in a divine capacity to allow us to step up to where we actually want to be. Wow, I didn't see that one coming, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't hold gifts for us that we haven't yet conceived. So the position's open. If we have and we see that right person, by the way, if you have finance capacities and you're spiritual in nature and you want to commit your time in that way, or if you know somebody like that, let us know. There's a job description in the office and we would love to talk with them or to you. Um, and if we don't have that happen within the time period we need, we are going to connect with a contractor who will serve us for as long as we need. We're thinking probably about three months to do that 
process of our church finance. People do that all the time. And that will give us the time and the space to find that next right person without stress. So there's plan A, there's plan B. God is good. We are in the meadow of our well-being. All things are working together for our good. And we are grateful as they unfold. All right, dear ones, change brings us the capacity for us to transform and to fulfill our destiny and to fulfill our potential. It's true for us individually. Jean, I love you. It's true for us collectively as a whole. And uh, by the way, she's not leaving. Lance is not leaving. They are here in our ministry. It's just she needs to open this door for her to be of service in that capacity. And we are grateful. Let's close with five affirmations, which are your takeaways for this week. I invite you to take one into each day. And would you say these with me from that place of truth of knowing within your heart and mind that all things are for us. Reflecting on my journey creates understanding and growth. Life is creation, continuously unfolding. There is nothing to fear but fear itself. I trust the one presence and power of the universe. All things are working together for my good and our good. And so it is. And so I let it be. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. And if you like the message, we invite you to like it, share it, and please subscribe. We are a new thought church where lives are transformed. So come on, check us out at unityhills.org. Namaste. Namaste.